Hi everyone, welcome back to the Let's Play series with Luton Town here on the channel. This is episode number six, I believe. And we've got some good news. If you look at that table, we are up to 16th in the table. We're on 29 points and we are six points ahead of Crystal Palace in 18th. Seven points ahead of Nottingham Forest in 19th and eight points ahead of Sheffield United who are rock bottom. I mean, that relegation zone is very tight it really is I think there's a lot of teams there that are all just as bad as each other I don't really know why Wolves have been our bogey team this season by the looks of it we just have really struggled against Wolves in all the games we've played against them but you know we're above them at the moment in the league anyway so since you were last with me we've not played many games we were here for the Brighton and Tottenham games where we got thumped 5-0 by Brighton but got a good one all draw against Tottenham since then, we got spanked against Everton. We really did. Um, this was a game I was looking at potentially we could get a point from, maybe. No, nowhere near. We had Calvert-Lewin just blitzed us in the first 38 minutes of his hat-trick. This S. Mills, Scott Mills, I think it's Scott Mills, it's Stan Mills, sorry. Stan Mills, he, he was like Lionel Messi in this game, you know what I mean? He was absolutely phenomenal. Deli Alley, I didn't even know was still playing for Everton. Maybe because this is your world in real life, he is still assigned to the club. And then Dominic Calvert Lewin got his fourth of the game. Deli Alley then got sent off after 54 minutes. We converted a penalty from Clinton Morris on 60 minutes. And then for some reason, Dyke was given the next penalty to take. Morris was still on the field, he hadn't been substituted or anything like that. As you can see by the fact there, he's still there. And he missed it. And I'm still thinking, why didn't Colton Morris still take the penalty? You know, I know he's already taken one, but, you know, have the courage of convictions. Do it again, you know. When, when you look at his stats, he's got seven goals for us this season. Four of them goals have been penalties. You know, he's got four from four. He's, he is a penalty taker. When you look at Daryl Dyke, for example, and this guy really does need to start scoring goals, which... To be fair, he has. We'll get to that in a second. Where's penalties on here? Penalty taking 12. So you don't kind of look at that and think, oh yeah, you're, you're a class penalty taker. Whereas Morris, I don't know what Morris' penalties is. I mean, to be fair, he's only 14, but it is better and he's, he is the man that scores their penalties. But anyway, 5-1. When you look at the stats, I mean, the stats say we dominated. But Everton, to be fair to them, at one point they'd had five shots on target and scored five goals. And I was just like, this is crazy. You know, whereas we've had 10 shots on target, we've scored one goal. And don't get me wrong, our XG has been bumped up because of two penalties. But yeah, that, that was quite a humbling experience. And it was the second time in three games we'd conceded five goals. Crystal Palace... Good 1-0 win in that one. It was a very even game. Jordan Clark in the 93rd minute got the three points. I really, by this point, I kind of resigned myself to the fact it was going to be a draw and that would be such a disappointing result because when we finished the last episode, I did say that we're looking at getting wins against Palace, Forest, Sheffield United, definitely. If we can get draws against Bournemouth and maybe Everton, then we would definitely have had enough points in the bank so to win that one nil was a massive relief but like I said I really thought we was going to mess it up and only get a draw and the fact we're at home as well I mean that that's where this has been quite favourable to us is we've got a lot of these games at home then we played against Manchester City and oh dear oh dear oh dear I mean we beat them in the previous fixture but we were nowhere near them in this one Akanji, Phillips, Kovacic and Ceballos with the goals. They didn't even have Erlen Haaland in their team. They didn't even need him. 4-0 win. Comfortable for them. 2-0 at half-time. Another two goals in the second half. What can you say? They're top of the table, I believe, at the moment. Manchester City, if we quickly go to them, we can probably see where they are. Nope, that doesn't tell us. We'll look at that in a minute. And then Nottingham Forest. 2-1 win against Nottingham Forest. Again, I'll say this was a pretty even and close game. A draw may have been a fair result, but we took our chances here. 
three shots on target. We scored two goals. Daryl Dyke actually managed to get a couple of goals. That's big for him because he's only scored one goal so far and he's a guy that I've bought to keep us in the Premier League with his goals. Well, he may just have done that with them two goals there. Yates did score in the 95th minute, but in all honesty, it was far too late by then. So when we go back to the Premier League table, yeah, Man City are top. We sit in 16th, like I say, six points outside the relegation zone. We've now got two massive games because after these two games, I think we're probably losing at least four of our final five. It looks like we're going to lose away to Man United, at home to Arsenal, away to Liverpool and at home to Chelsea. I don't envisage, I mean, Chelsea is seventh, Liverpool are third, Arsenal are second, United are fourth. That's a nightmare run of fixtures at the end of a season. So the game against Fulham, who are ninth, if we go into these final games needing something, that will be the one where we would need to get something. If we have a look at Crystal Palace, because they're basically the team that's nearest to us, look at their schedule. Their final five, they've got Villa next away, then they've got Burnley, who are 13th at home. That could be points for them. They've got Tottenham away, who are 8th. Bournemouth are at home, who are 15th. Everton away from home and West Ham at home. I could see them getting maybe three points against Burnley, three points against Bournemouth, maybe a point against Everton or West Ham. So I can see them getting another seven points, which for me, when you look at the table, that would take them to 30. They do have a slightly better goal difference. So that's why I'm saying that out of today's games, if we can win one of these two games, I think that will be enough to keep us up. So before we get into the fixture, I just need to speak about Elijah Adebayo. Now, bearing in mind, one of the big features that Sports Interactive dropped regarding Football Manager this year is that they've improved player interaction logic. So Elijah Adebayo, as you know from the last episode, I've had a big falling out with him. I've demoted him to the um, under-21s. I don't want him at the club anymore. I then had the leadership team come to me and say that they think he deserves a new contract because I've been working so hard on dynamics, and I'll show you those in a second, at getting them in a good position. And when I say I've been working hard, I've worked my butt off trying to get these dynamics into a good position, praising them for training, praising them just because they've walked through the door and showed up, really. You know, just trying to get into an area where it's like people are happy, at least at an average level. So I said, OK, fine, I'll give him a new contract, you know, if it helps improve morale amongst the group of players, blah, 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 blah. So I went to his agent, said to his agent, I'd like to discuss offering Elijah a new contract. Don't want to talk to you, don't want a new contract, he's got no interest in it at all. And I'm like, OK, fair enough. Can't say I haven't tried. And then Adebayo comes to me and says, you've not fulfilled your promise. You promised me a new contract. And I'm like, I'm trying to give you that new contract, buddy, but you won't talk to me. But you're talking to me now. But there's nowhere in there where you can say, well, actually, now you're in the room. Shall we discuss your new contract? Because your agent's telling me that you're not interested. So I said, you know, I'm sorry, I'll give you that new contract. You know, please accept my apologies. And then I've gone back to his agent again, and he's still not prepared to talk to me. So to show that this isn't just me talking nonsense, enter contract negotiations. For some reason, I'm not even getting the option to talk to the agent now. There you go. My client isn't interested in entering into contract negotiations with your club. He isn't interested due to being transfer listed. So what I'm going to do now is see if I can take him off the transfer list. No status set. I don't know if I transfer him, so just confirm that. And he's still not prepared to talk to me. Now, I will come back after the game against Bournemouth and see if he's changed his mind now that I've taken him off the transfer list. But there you go. So, dynamics, there you go. 
slight dip in the club atmosphere, but it's at a very good level at the moment. Managerial support is good. Team cohesion is good. And that just goes to show what a couple of wins does to the club atmosphere and that, because that was average. This was average. This has slightly been into the good, but now it's very good and good on these two. So perhaps we look at the happiness side of things. In the leadership group, I mean, Pelly Ruddock and Panzu is dissatisfied with the club. He's concerned about his playing time. Overall happiness, though, is content. It's only when you get down to the influential players and you've got Ogbené slightly happy, but then you've got Alfie Dowd, who's not even playing, he's got a long-term injury. So there's a few that are supporting teammates and things like that, but overall, I think that's actually pretty good. It's better than what I was expecting it to be. So, yeah, let's get back to the previous screen. As you see here, we're playing in the evening kickoff. Palace have drawn against Chelsea, so they were actually on 22 points. They've drawn against Chelsea. We now need to go and get some points against Bournemouth. We need a win. We really do. We, my aim is to get four points from this episode. And I think a draw against Bournemouth and a win against Sheffield United. So this is the team we're going to go with, with Walton in goal. Ruckman left back. Cannon right back with Diku and Danaya in the centre. Onyeka and Campbell in the midfield. Mendes, Gomez and Esquivel out wide with Dyke and Morris up front. Let's get into the game and hopefully we can get some points in this because this really is as must win as it gets because if we fail to pick up at least one win, at minimum three points, if we fail to pick up three points from this episode, I really don't know if we're going to survive or not. So Esquivel with the free kick. Neto comes out and claims it. It's going to be... Bournemouth work their way from the back, so it's with Brooks. Oh, we've intercepted it. Mendes Gomez has it now. Gets across into the box. Oh, we've hit Dykes hit the post. I thought they were going to break away then, but luckily they didn't. Or well, at least the highlights decided to end then anyway. So 15 minutes gone. Not been a massively active game. We've dominated possession. We've had two shots on goal, but not a shot on target. Bournemouth are yet to have a shot at goal. We've just had a first shot on target and a second one. But obviously it weren't good enough to be considered as a highlight. So here's Bournemouth now with Neto. Pumps the ball upfield. We win the first header and the second. We've given it away to Brooks. And Brooks is through and it's just gone wide. That was a let off. That was poor defending from us. And Brooks really should have put that in the back of the net. So Esquivel with the free kick. This is in a very good position, actually. Oh, and it's just gone high, just gone wide. Couldn't quite... I mean, he's been pretty good, Esquivel. He's not been amazing, but he's been pretty good. One of our January transfer signings. And that's half-time and it's nil-nil. Where's my mouse gone? There it is. So... The pundits might not believe in us today, but the fans do, so go and do them proud. Okay. I do still think in them team talk things there needs to be a bit more logic to some of that because you'll say something that makes perfect logical sense and they don't like it or they just don't interact, uh, don't react at all. Here's Solanke for Bournemouth. Luckily, it's straight at Walton. And that was Bournemouth's first shot on target and it's taken to the start of the second half for that to happen. So we're an hour gone. We're going to need to look at making some substitutions. So looking at this, I mean, everyone's playing meh at the moment. I think we're probably going to take Colton Morris off. The problem is we take him off. All we've really got is Cordy Woodrow and he's not scored for about 12 years. So we take him off. I think we might take Cannon off for Burke. I'm just deliberated and we'll confirm that sub just fresh legs in defence really thought they were going to show a corner but obviously decided against it so Bournemouth now 68th minute of the game here's Longstaff to Holm plays it back Holm receives it back again it's now with Cook to Longstaff 
Bournemouth being quite patient with their build-up play. They'll be looking at this as being some some good bit of football that they're playing. He Chan, formerly of Wolves, of course. Well, I can't look at this at the moment. I think we just make a tackle. Oh, they've got some space here with Holm. He gets across into the box and it's just over the bar. It kind of looked like they didn't really know what to do with it when they had it. We go five shots on target, but still can't score a goal. Um, so we're going to bring Ogbené on for Esquivel and Onyadima on for Gomez. Just see if we get some fresh legs in the two inside forward positions. Bubba Ruckman with a free kick. Don't know what kind of happened there, but we've won it back again. Burke's now got it. Goes back to Campbell, to Denea. He finds Ogbené. It's now our turn to patiently build. Denea again, this time to Onyeka. To Denea. To Burke. Ogbené inside to Campbell. Gives it to Dyke. Dyke, I think, was trying to find Woodrow, but the pass was way off. This is my concern when you give the ball away with a misplaced pass. And shot was over the bar, didn't come to anything. But it looks like we could be heading towards a nil-nil draw, which, to be quite honest, I'll take it. So I think we bring Laidoni on for Onyeka. I think Laidoni probably deserves to be in the team ahead of, Le uh, ahead of Onyeka, to be honest. Woodrow with the corner. Onyadima picks it up out wide, puts the ball back in the box towards Ogbené. It's pinging about a bit. Oh! Oh, I thought Woodrow was going to end his goal drought then. Seven shots on target. It's really disappointing we can't. Again, 12 corners, we still can't score from one. It's really. I don't understand how we just do not score a single goal from a corner. Okay, so 0 0 draw. Sim fives with them. Let's not ruin morale. We go into the game now against Sheffield United. We're on 31 points. We're eight points ahead of Crystal Palace. If we can get a win in the next game, move on to 34 points. Oh, no, so I'm looking at Bournemouth. We're on 30 points. We're, we're seven ahead of Palace. If we can get a win in the next game, we'd potentially move ahead of Bournemouth. But wherever we end up doesn't matter. We'd be on 33 points and potentially 10 points ahead of Palace. And that that would be huge. It really would, because then that would mean they would need points from pretty much every one of their remaining five games while we lose every one of their remaining five. That part of it is a possibility, let's be honest. So I'm going to skip forward through the game now to the game against Sheffield United, and I'll see you back here after this short two-second transition. Okay, so welcome back, and we're about to go into the game against Sheffield United at home, and I did notice on the league table that Sheffield United have actually moved up a position, so I thought, let's have a look at their schedule, because they've obviously got points recently, and yeah, they beat Burnley 2-0 at home, and Dai and Oli McBurney with the goals. They also beat Manchester United 1-0, which is quite a surprising result, it was at home as well. And when you look at the stats, they were probably deserving of that win as well, especially in terms of the number of shots they got on target. Yes, their XG is not as good, and United did have two goals disallowed. Martial um, with both of them disallowed. But Rian Brewster scoring in the fourth minute, and fair play to them, they hung on to that 1-0 lead all the way through. So we take them on now. One bit of news item I just want to bring you. We had Adebayo wanted to discuss personal continually broken promises to him, even though, as you've seen yourself, I've tried offering him a contract, but he won't discuss one with me. But apparently that means I'm breaking promises to him because I'm not offering him one. So we had a little chat. He said, I'm going to need to leave the club and work with a manager I can trust. So I clicked on the option, fine, we'll, put, we'll get rid of you all, but we'll find a move for you. So he's now handed in his transfer request. Considering he wouldn't discuss a new deal because he's been transfer listed, that's why we took him off the transfer list. This this boy needs to work his brain out, he really does, because 
he's clearly got potential about him and he's but he's just been rubbish. I mean I don't know what them stats are saying. He's made more than two substitute appearances. There you go. So that made no sense what was on the previous page. But three goals in eleven appearances it's just so frustrating when you get like I say, the, the interaction logic is meant to have improved and there's an example for you in season one where it's clearly not improved. So let's get into the game. I've not actually selected the squad yet, so I think I'm going to bring Leiduni in for Onyeka. And other than that, I think I'm going to keep it as it is. Now you might notice Joe Taylor is on the bench in place of Corley Woodrow. He's not been injured or anything like that. But... I was looking through the dev centre and Joe Taylor, I sat here and I thought, I recognise the name, I'm sure I had him in last year's football manager. And then I looked at the history and that's where I recognised it, that when I was managing Ebbsfleet, I had him on loan from Peterborough. And then obviously in real life, he's started off with probably the January transfer window, has then gone on loan to, uh, sorry, they moved permanently to loot of 600,000. And I thought, you know what? When I had him at Ebbsfleet, he was dynamite. He really was. He, his rating for us was a lot better. He was something like two-star current with five-star potential. But obviously, he's at a higher level now. Maybe that's affected his potential, whatever else. So I just thought, you know what? Woodrow's not scored in 10 games. Let's just put him on the bench and see what, what happens. So the team looks a bit familiar. Walton in goal, Ruckman and Cannon in the fullback positions, Diku and Denaya in the middle, Leiduni in for Onyeka and Campbell in the centre of midfield with Mendes Gomez and Esquivel out wide, Morris as the attacking forward and Dyke as the target forward. So let's get into it. We need a win in this game. I can't, I can't state how important a win here is. A defeat would be disastrous. You know, a defeat, I think, would mean we are down, quite honestly. So, let's get into it. We're at home. We're against Sheffield United. Esquivel with the corner. Of course, it's cleared away and we don't score from it. Mendes Gomez picks it up, though. We can come back at them. Cannon to Esquivel. Puts it into Dyke. Daryl Dyke has scored. Oh, it's going to be... It's going to be disallowed, isn't it? Because it always is. Please, ref. Oh. By the way, I am wearing the Luton Town shirt for this episode, by the way. I um, thought, let's try and bring every bit of superstition we can. That If I'm wearing a shirt, we'll get the win. I, I do hate how it does seem like far more goals get disallowed for offside for me than it does for the opposition. That's so disappointing because that looked like a good goal as well, but... Offside's offside. So we're not getting many highlights. We're peeping towards half time with a bit of a whimper. And you could probably say Sheffield United so far have been a better team. Morris tries to get it in, but Endai can bring it away now. We win it back. Mendes Gomez tries the ball over the top, doesn't quite find Morris, but Morris gives it to Campbell, to Esquivel, to Morris. Oh my word, what a shot! Esquivel with the assist. Morris has got the goal. That could be huge. That could be massive. Oh, we go in 1-0 up at half-time. Colton Morris, who, to be fair, doesn't score many goals from open play. I mean, doesn't score many goals full stop, but definitely not from open play. Come on, let's find another gear to take control of this game. If we can get a second goal, then we really would be in control of this game. There's a highlight right from kickoff. Cannon to Esquivel. Gets across into the box towards Morris. But it's headed away. We get it back again with Diku to lay Dooney. Oh, he's poor pass. And Sheffield United can bring it forward. They go back to the goalkeeper. Let's not concede a goal as the first highlight of the half, please. Oh. Looks like that was a save from the goalkeeper, so it's gone out for a corner. I don't like this highlight, I really don't. Egan now has it. I mean, can we just end this highlight? Thank you. Oh, that that was far too stressful, that highlight. Cannon now with the ball. 
to Dyke. He goes through, but he's blazed over the bar. But it, he either took a deflection or a save. It is a corner, not that corners matter because we don't score from them. But Esquivel, what to tell you? Back with Esquivel again, and he was in an offside position. I mean, that was a poor choice of pass, I think, from Mendes Gomez there, really, to be honest. We're going to need to look at making substitutions very soon. I mean, it's been a very even game, to be fair. Basham starts the move for Sheffield United. It's now with Sander Berg in the midfield. We cut it out through Denier to Mendes Gomez. Gives it to Le Dooney. He's undersold again. Cannon picks it up, though. Running into the box. This is promising. Oh, Le Dooney. Come on. Just a bit more composure from you, please. Okay, let's have a look at the substitute. Who are we going to be taking off? So, Mendes Gomez, Michael on Le Dooney hasn't really done much. I'm a bit annoyed with him at that. So, I think we're bringing Onyeka on for Le Dooney. And Onyedema can come on for Mendes Gomez. So, here's a highlight. It's with Sheffield United. Danae has actually been playing pretty well from what I've seen in these highlights. He wins the ball back quite a bit in this episode. Esquivel gets the ball into what? To Morris. It's 2-0. Don't you dare disallow this ref. Don't you dare. Not a second one. Oh, get in there. How important is that? 2-0. Oh, Colton Morris, you legend. Right, we're going to take Dyke off and bring Taylor on. That's a substitution I definitely wanted to make. Um, I think we take... No, I don't want to take Rackman off. He's actually playing really well. And you know, I think I'm just going to leave it at that. We're... Morris with two goals in, in this game. We win it back. Oh, Escobar just basically just giving it back to them. Oh, Taylor's won it. Probably need to change him around, actually. Morris for a hat-trick. Oh, my word, I'm in dreamland. I am in dreamland. Colton Morris has got a hat-trick for us against Sheffield United. One thing I'm going to change, because Joe Taylor's like five foot seven, he's not a target man. Blimey. He prefers to be a pressing forward, so I think we'll change that as a pressing forward on attack. Confirm the changes. We are 3-0 up against Sheffield United. We're actually going to win the game. Colton Morris with a hat-trick. Esquivel has been sensational for us as well. So has Reggie Cannon. He's been really good. Onya Dima's done well since coming on. And we have picked up three massive, huge points. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. There's the table. For a minute then, I thought that was us. I was like, what are we doing down there? We've won. We're up to 15th in the league table. We have a game in hand over Bournemouth. I mean, like I say, the team's below us in terms of Bournemouth and Wolves. I'm not really worried about them. Oh, this is incredible. We are currently 10 points ahead of Palace, 9 points ahead of Sheffield United with five games to go. I don't want to get my hopes up, but this is looking... It's looking like we're actually going to survive. And I didn't give myself a Kane Hell's chance after we, the way we started the season. But, Morris, you deserve the praise. You really do. That was incredible. I mean, you look at this. He's got 10 goals in 30 games. A goal in every three games, four assists. Bear on, out of them 10 goals, four of them have been penalties. So, he has had his fair share of penalties in that but oh I'm so happy Carlton Morris you legend and I think he will go down as the first legend of my YouTube channel if we actually manage to stay up so there you go that's where we've been we're going to come back for the final two games of the episode against Liverpool and Chelsea if anything happens in before that you know maybe we might need to come back for Arsenal Liverpool and Chelsea do a triple header or whatever. Most likely, though, it will be these two games, Liverpool and Chelsea. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. 
subscribe to the channel, all of that sort of stuff. And I'm so relieved. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.